Hi, it's Michelle. I'm here today to open my birthday presents. Well, some of them. Whoa, Marty. <laughs> Sorry, let me get you back in a comfy spot there. Some of them anyway. That was Marty. <laughs> you, you can come up. Got a scratching post next to me that he can sit on. I thought maybe then, if he wants to come hang out, he can. Do you want to come say hi? So everybody that starts a YouTube channel has their own reason. But one thing I think is really interesting about BookTube is I think most people that start a BookTube channel do it for the same reason. And that reason is I think most booktubers do it to meet other people that love books. It's just so hard to meet people anymore. <laughs> and it's hard to find other book lovers. And that's why I started my book channel. Or, well, one of the reasons. I, I think I just mentioned in a video that I have a main YouTube channel. I had started doing book videos because I love reading and I wanted to connect with some book lovers and I found that there were a few that watched that channel but it started kind of irritating people that watch that channel that weren't book lovers so I started this channel and I had no idea what I was getting myself into <laughs> in a good way though I didn't realize how many book friends I was going to end up with and I'm just so pleasantly surprised. I feel so blessed. I'm very happy about the amount of friends that I have. One of them is Glenn. Glenn is a viewer. Uh, we email each other back and forth. Glenn has sent me books in the past that he loves that he wants me to read eventually. It's one of those no pressure read when you feel like it kind of situations. And Glenn has a mother that um, is 93. She's a book lover and her children are book lovers. Isn't that usually how it goes? Maybe not usually, but a lot. So she's 93. She loves books still. She's very young at heart. And I really think that's probably what keeps Millie young at heart. And Millie loves watching this channel. So thank you so much for watching, Millie. I love knowing that you're watching. That's so wonderful. Glenn and Millie were having a conversation about my birthday coming up and they decided that they wanted to send me some birthday gifts. So he gets books on eBay and has them sent over to me. And that's what I'm going to open up today. I did want to tell you a little bit about my birthday. So I am a Memorial Day weekend baby. I was born... I just look at my birthday that way. Um, it just seems, it's kind of a fun thing, I guess, because when I was younger, it was a problem. It seemed like whatever day my birthday fell on, sometimes it's on Memorial Day, sometimes it's on that weekend, sometimes it's a couple days before or after the weekend, and it used to be a big issue. In junior high, my mom gets so upset every time she thinks about this story, but I'll tell you. Or I guess it wasn't really junior high, was it? Well, yeah, it was eighth grade. <laughs> we we decided to... Here's Marty. We decided to have a slumber... I'm going to act like it's normal so that he stays there. We decided to have a slumber party. I'll scoot you over so that you can look at him. We decided to have a slumber party for my birthday. Oh. <laughs> I don't want you to... That's a lit candle, honey. I don't want burnt whiskers or anything. <laughs> if you hear hissing, that's Zelda. They're weaving around down here. Did you smell the candle? Now he's going <laughs> with his nose like. <laughs> my mom said, why don't we have a slumber party? Because that year my birthday was on Memorial Day weekend. Now we have Zelda here. 
Oh, this is going to be fun. They're going to start competing over who can... Don't go up there. You'll get stuck up there and then you'll get mad. Stay down here, okay? You're not as flexible as he is. <laughs> stay, stay down here. Come here. It's okay. Just turn this way. <laughs> no, you have to go up there because he did. <laughs> so... What a great idea. It was my 14th birthday. No. Okay, go back there. Whatever. So it was my 14th birthday. We were going to have a slumber party. We invited a bunch of girls. They all said they were coming. My, my mom and my stepdad bought a bunch of pizzas and ice cream and just all kinds of stuff. They went to Costco and bought this huge cake and everything. And at the last minute, this popular girl decided to have a slumber party and invite everyone over. So everybody went there instead of my birthday party, slumber party thing. <laughs> and my mom was so upset. And to this day, she gets all teary-eyed when she thinks about it. But you know, I found out who my real friends were. I still had a couple friends show up and yeah, it, it is what it is. That is life, right? It sucked, but it was a life lesson. And one of the things that I learned was when you're born on a holiday weekend, one, don't have any expectations <laughs> over what's going to happen or who, who you're going to hang out with, what you're going to do. Just no expectations. And two, spread the celebration out as much as possible. I used to kind of feel like, and I don't, I'm not real big into, I don't feel like I need a lot of attention or anything like that on my birthday. Like some people really like, pay attention to me, it's my birthday. I, I'm not, like, I don't wear a crown on my birthday or anything like that, right? But um, for some reason, ever since we got to Vegas, I feel like people really celebrate me on my birthday and I, I don't know why. It's, I mean, I, I'm not complaining, it's just very different and um Maybe I'm supposed to be here. I don't know. <laughs> so one of those things is things like this happen where I, I get sent um, books and, and things like that. And it's just wonderful. But how nice is that, right? Um, now, before I open this, I did want to tell you there's more books coming. My mom asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I said, oh, I'd like some books. And she said, right, obviously. But what books do you want? <laughs> And I told her, you know what? I don't really know because um, I don't really want anything. I'm at that age where I kind of have what I want. And if I do want anything, it's usually kind of expensive, like furniture for the backyard or a new bed or something like that. So um, as far as anything else extra that I want, it would probably be books, right? So I told her, well, if you really want to get me something, you know, because she really doesn't need to, but if she wants to, I told her, could you just send me an eBay gift certificate or gift card? And then I'll pick out what I want. Cause I wanted to get some of the collector's books that I've been trying to find, but not finding in the thrift shops and used stores and that kind of thing. So she sent me that. So I'm going to be picking out some books on there. I've already ordered a couple, but I'm not quite done yet. And then my dad sent me, um, a birthday, gift card also and um we are going to be getting a dvd player with that there's a little bit left over and there's a couple books i was planning on getting with what's left over with that as well <laughs> so that'll be after everything arrives like a month from now i'll do another book haul with that one <laughs> like i need more books i know but you know what it's okay i love books i mean it's what i want right so, <laughs> here's the bag. Now, Glenn sent me a little cheat sheet <laughs> with a description of the books and why they were sent, which is so fun. What a fun way to do it, right? I'm just going to kind of fold them out here. Let's see. Oh. Casino Royale. 
007 by Ian Fleming? A James Bond novel? What? Okay. Look at this cover. Is that not cool? This is a very special book for my mom. I'm just kind of paraphrasing. I'm not going to read it word for word, but my mom started reading this series before the worldwide sensation took hold. And while she isn't exactly sure how it started, I think it had to do with JFK. Hmm. So it was our ultra cool mom who first introduced this stuff to my brothers and I, and there, thereby started a huge passion for us that continues to this day. Back in the mid sixties, my mom had a really boring job. She was always a working mom and pretty liberated woman. She was a secretary at a job that could go a whole week without there being much work for her. So she told me she would read the latest books in this series at her desk and get paid for it. <laughs> How wonderful. This was the first book that she asked him to send me when she listed the books that she wanted him to send me for my birthday. How cool is that? I love this. Introducing James Bond. Charming, sophisticated, handsome, chillingly ruthless, and licensed to kill. This, the first of Ian Fleming's tales of secret agent 007, finds Bond on a mission to neutralize a lethal, high-rolling Russian operative called simply Le Schiffer? Le Schiffer? I'm going to slaughter that. I'm sorry. By ruining him at the Baccarat table and forcing his Soviet spy masters to retire him. It seems that Lady Luck is taken with 007. Le Schiffer has hit a losing streak. But some people just refuse to play by the rules and Bond's attraction to a beautiful female agent leads him to disaster and an unexpected savior. And then below it, wouldn't you know, the quote is by Raymond Chandler, which <laughs> is one of the books that Glenn sent me earlier and is the first book that I read that Glenn sent me, which I absolutely loved. Uh, Raymond Chandler's Farewell, My Lovely. <laughs> Raymond Chandler said, Bond is what every man would like to be and what every woman would like to have between her sheets. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, I am looking forward to reading this. What good timing, too, right before summer. Look at the picture when you first open it. So was Bond supposed to be a little bit older like this? I mean, I guess I, I'll find out when I read the book, but I'll always picture the early 80s Bond. Hey, honey, who played James Bond in the early 80s? Early 80s? Yeah, when we were little kids. Not no. I can't remember who. That's who's, who I picture as James Bond, though. Octopussy, that guy. I will always picture this guy. I can't think of his name, but as James Bond. But can I also mention how beautiful her dress and shoes are? Oh, how fitting, too, that this is the book when I live in Vegas. Okay, so the next book is Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Thank you, honey. Brad looked it up for me. Roger Moore. Okay, the next book is... Okay. <laughs> I think this is... Really? Okay. This has got to be Glenn's favorite book of all time because his favorite book of all time started with an S. So I'm thinking that's what this is. It's called Shane by Jack Schaefer. 
the unforgettable novel of a boy's love and a gunman's struggle to escape his past. Really? He said, when I look at it, I'll go, what? <laughs> Call me Shane. Sorry, by the way, if I sound congested. I My allergies are really bugging me. Like, I can't breathe very well again. It's There's some kind of pollen in the air again. And I, so I'm sorry if I sound terrible. It's just, it's life, right? He rode into our valley in the summer of 89. A slim man dressed in black. Call me Shane, he said. He never told us more. There was a deadly calm in the valley that summer. A slow climbing tension that seemed to focus on Shane. There's something about him, Mother said. Something dangerous. He's dangerous, all right, Father said, but not to us. He's like one of these here slow burning fuses. The mule Skinner said, quiet, so quiet you forget it's burning till it sets off a hell of a blow of trouble and there's trouble brewing. Okay. I mean, I'll read it and we'll find out. I don't know. I'm confused about what. Okay. The copyright is 1949. So when it says the summer of 89, they mean 1889. Because I'm thinking 1989? No way. Okay, 1889. This could be very fascinating, though. <laughs> Let's see what else he said about it here. Because he did say a little bit about it here, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Of course it cuts off. Okay, he says... It was a reading assignment for his freshman English class. And then it cuts off. Still though, I'm going to read it and I'll let you guys know what I think. I'm excited to read it though, because I want, I personally, anybody that's another book lover, I want to know what their favorite books of all time are and I want to read them. So let me know what your favorite book of all time is, if you have one. But this is Gwen's. That's pretty cool, though. I'm fascinated to know what this book is about. The next book is The Razor's Edge by W. Somerset Maham. This one's a classic, right? I think. one of Millie's all-time favorite books and authors. And Glenn says this author is probably one of his top five favorite authors. Wow. They both love this book, but he doesn't love it as much as his mom does. Hmm. They both love everything they've read by this author. Intimate Acquaintances but less than friends, they meet and part in post-war London and Paris. Elliot, the arch snob, but also the kindest of men. Isabel, considered to be entertaining, gracious, and tactful. Gray, the quintessence of the regular guy. Suzanne, shrewd, roving, and friendly. Sophie, lost wanton with a vicious attractiveness about her and finally larry so hard and trustful lost in the world's confusion their story one of somerset maham's best encompasses the pain passion and poignancy of life itself i had to get up for a second you know what this kind of sounds like maybe i should read these around the same time it kind of sounds like this Sounds similar, right? Which is interesting because Glenn said he thought this book was really good too. And they both take place after a war, right? Didn't, doesn't this take place after a war too? <laughs> so 
So let me know, Glenn, if you, if you agree that these should be read around the same time. I think there's something very fascinating about love after or during war, right? Our emotions are so heightened. <laughs> the way we're looking at the world is so different. This sounds really good though. This sounds kind of juicy. Maybe kind of sexy too, huh? <laughs> I think Millie knows my taste in books. Of course you do though. You watch the videos, right? And then the last one. I really like this cover. Marty. <laughs> Just one second. <laughs> He put his face in the bag and was like going like this and it was flying all around. Are you okay? You are really acting strange, sir. I It's like I can't leave anything on the floor. You start spazzing out a little bit. Okay. What was I saying? Oh, I really like this cover. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, I haven't heard of this author. Not... Not that that means a lot. It's, he's probably really famous, I, but I haven't heard of him. This is another one of Millie's favorite authors, and this is the first book she ever read by him. Glenn gave her his copy after he read it, when the book was first new. And they both really enjoyed it, but she became absolutely hooked on this author after she read this book. She wanted to send a different book originally, but then she thought, a different book by him, but then she thought it would be fun for me to start where she did. Oh, that's sweet. I love that. I think, I think stuff like that is fun to have people, like there's something very nostalgic about that, having me start where you did. And yes, it, it says and see if you might have it might have the same effect on you. Yes, it probably will have the same effect on me. Ooh, it's got right when I open it here, it's got a map. And I'm wondering if this isn't a war a, a book about war, which we were I was just mentioning that I think war is an interesting time because emotions are so heightened. September 1939, just a few days after Britain has declared war against Germany, here we go, <laughs> a giant seaplane splashes down at Southampton, England. Pan American's Flying Clipper, the most luxurious aircraft ever built, is New York bound on the last civilian flight out of Europe for years to come. Its boarding cargo is a group of passengers desperate to escape something more menacing than war, their hidden haunted pasts. Ken Follett's first class ticket to suspense is set in an era when flying was still a peril fraught adventure. The Clippers pilot still haunted the wind to conserve precious fuel. Its navigators followed the night light of stars and all lives hung on the captain's fateful choice at the point of no return. Only Follett can give you an experience like this. Aboard the legendary Clipper on its lonely way across the Atlantic in a thrilling, ominous night over water. Among the Clipper's passengers are entitled English fas fascist and his eccentric family, a sheltered young beauty hungry for reckless love, a runaway wife, and the American who seduced her, a feuding brother and his sister closing in for a kill, a versatile thief, handsome and charming, a most wanted escapee, and an ancient princess who has known better worlds. They will be in the air for 30 hours, soothed, by the carpeted lounges and curtained 
beds, the gourmet dining room, and the endless champagne. Oh, that sounds like it'll get dramatic. They're drinking champagne, too. <laughs> but as storm clouds mount over the Atlantic, tension in the Clippers' cabin gathers turbulent force. Once inside the flying palace, there is no escape, no turning back from the nightmare that awaits them all. Bullet recreates an aviation legend, just as the world about to change forever. Night Over Water is a dazzling novel of skyborne peril and dangerous liaisons on history's most romantic airplane, the last flight of the fabulous Flying Clipper. Wow, so is this based on a true story? It says it recreates it. I like to read stuff and then look into it because I kind of like to come to my own conclusions about things and then find out if, if I'm right, if that, I don't know. It's just how I like to do it. So I, I will read this and then look into whether or not it's true and what's true about it and kind of go from there. I already know when I'm reading this though, I am going to be, I can't remember the dates and that's okay. Cause I should keep that private anyway, but I'm going to be going with Brad on a business trip that he's going on and we're going to be flying. So I'm going to start reading this on the plane. And I'm also going to be near the ocean where we are. So this would be the perfect book to read on the plane and near the ocean and then back on the plane. If I, well, if I don't finish it while I'm out there and then I will, I'll be talking to you doing a video while I'm out there and stuff. And then you'll find out all about it after I get home. But I think that'd be perfect. So that's what I will do with this one. And then we are going to be going on a trip, uh, in August where we're going to be going up, um, and going on like a fishing trip where Brad will be fishing and I'll be reading a lot. And I think for sure I want to read this while he's fishing. This sounds like the perfect, and I wanted to read um, one of the other books that Glenn sent also while I'm up there. So this is going to, to me, I love, it's one of the most special times to read is when I'm traveling. So this is going to be very special for me. Thank you so much for sending me these books. I, I'm going to cherish these and I'm there's, there's nothing more special to me than getting books. So I, I just really, really appreciate that. It just means the world to me that, that you, you both sat down and talked and figured out which books to send and why I just love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, it means so much. Um, I did want to say one other thing though, Millie, now that I know what books you want me to read and why I, I really want to recommend a book to you. <laughs> um, if you have a chance it, maybe you've already read it, but I think you would really love this book. Um, it's called the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna and it's about two sisters and their lives during World War II. Um, it takes place in, I can't believe I forgot where they are, um, German occupied war torn France. And this is, this is a book. It is so good though. And knowing that you love stories about uh, what people are going through during or after wars, I, th I really think you would love this book. So if you have a chance to get your hands on a copy, definitely check this one out. Marty says, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I guess he wants me to go watch the game with him. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all I've got for now. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the description box if you've had a chance to read any of these books. And 
if you have any thoughts on when you think I should read any of them. Um, I, I've already decided about these two, so... <laughs> um, these are kind of already set in stone. But I would love to hear what you think about the other two. Uh, Razor's Edge and Casino Royale, if you have any thoughts about when I read these. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Happy reading. Bye.